welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing the monogram Christmas ornaments. These monograms are really popular right now, so let's do some Christmas ornaments that are really simple to make. And you can make these as gifts or for your tree or whatever you'd like to. I started with a stamp and they have these right now at Michael's and these are actually in the dollar section and they just brought a whole bunch in again near Christmas time so I think it's going to be something they're going to even carry afterwards and it has a little frame with the little initial in it and if you can't find of these there's other ways you could do it they do have frame stamps for a lot of the um, stores that sell stamps have the frames and then you could go get the little alphabet and put them in that or you could even spell out words like joy or something in different frames so there's a bunch of ways you can do it so don't get just stuck in my idea but we're going to be working with uh, the quick wood um, excuse me, the quick copper and the quick aluminum today. And as most of you already know, we'll explain a little bit. What's really great about these, the quick copper and the quick aluminum are very, very fast drying products and you only have about five minutes workable time in it, so you want to get it done. But the great thing is in five minutes, it's starting to get hard. In an hour, you can give it away as a gift. So it's something that you can get done and give. So we're going to start by spraying our hands and remove all your jewelry. And I'm just using vegetable spray and we're also going to spray our wax paper and spread it across. You don't want it all in one pile. We're not sticking it to anything today so we're not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to start with the copper one today. And I'm going to take my stamp pad, grab a towel here, and I'm going to spray it just a tad so it doesn't get stuck down in the crevices. But I'm also going to wipe off the part that sticks up because we're going to put color right onto it with our ink pad so you've already got your color. Now let's go ahead and get our copper going here and I forgot to grab scissors so I'll be right back. We try to make these videos like you come over to visit me in my studio and we're just sitting down and talking and it's kind of a nice thing about it because I don't have to worry about if everything's right or perfect or reshoot a hundred times we just go with the flow. A lot of you have expressed that you really like that. It had a piece of paper plastic on it you have to make sure that you take it off and there's two pieces of the epoxy wood putty epoxy which is actually what it is and you want to blend them together to activate it I do have some quick copper videos and quick wood videos that I suggest you watch which go into a lot more detail I am going to dip my hands in water and just wet this it gives it a smoother effect and it's easier to blend. And we're just going to keep on mixing it till we have no marbleization color in it at all. And then I'm going to roll it in a ball. And I'm going to lay it down on my wax paper and you're going to fold your wax paper, leave enough room that it can go out this way. And the first thing I'm going to do is push it down with my fingers to kind of get a nice shape. And then I'm going to roll it out with my dowel. You don't want it too thin and it doesn't have to be too thick. A nice consistency. I'm going to do something with this one a little bit different than I'll do the other one. Roll this one more time. Don't take too much time on these because you are under the gum, but if you don't like it, you can re roll it. I'm going to roll it more into a little bit of an oblong shape. I'll show you why in a minute. Make 
sure your wax paper doesn't leave the lines in your wood either. If it kind of gets a line in it, you want to make sure you get that out. sprayed my stamp and I want a red color in this so I'm just going to go to my red ink and I'm going to ink it up and I am going to put this right where I want it line it up and just push that in so that you make sure that you have all of that down and pull that straight up and that's why we sprayed it so it'll come right up and look how that turned out Isn't that really cool you've already got your color and everything in that. Now I'm going to come in here and I found a Christmas ornament cookie cutter that will fit right on top of this or over the top of this. So I am going to cut this with a cookie cutter. And I want to make sure. And if you have one that's a little bit more detailed, spray it with your vegetable spray first. To cut this one out just a little bit. That cookie cutter was a little bit thicker on the sides instead of a sharp one. So I'm just going to come in with my hobby knife and remove that off. So we have this ornament now. And I'm going to put my hole in it because you want to do that kind of early so when it dries. And you can use an awl or anything that you like to put your ornaments into. It's a little bit thinner up on top so I'm going to put it down just a little bit. I'm using just a metal rod so I can make a bigger hole to, so I can put my cording into that. But see isn't that nice? Now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of embossing powder to it. And I'm just going to use gold embossing powder. And just where I want it. I want a little bit on the edges. And when you're doing embossing powder, always pounce on your lid. Don't go straight to your what you're working on because you will end up with way too much embossing powder. Embossing powder goes a long ways. And then I'm also going to come in the middle and just do around it as well. Pulling it in and kind of pulling it out so I have this really nice S. So there we have an ornament, a nice Christmas tree ornament, and that's literally taking us minutes. And all we're going to do on that one is let it dry. Now I'm going to show you with the quick aluminum real quick. I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to do it just a little bit different this time. Another sheet of wax paper here. But you could sit down and make a bunch of these in no time at all. I forgot to show you what I do with my leftovers. I'm not sure if I let them dry too much or not already. I meant to do that right away and I forgot. I just take my leftovers, round them into a ball with my thumb and kind of smooth them out. If you have like a little circle, you could cut them with that. And this guy's getting too hard. I should have done them right away. And then I take my stamp and do the same thing in it. And then you don't have any wasted, wasted um, material. And then put the hole in it. I push down too hard on that. Put the little hole in it right there. And then you can use it as a tag or a little ornament or a necklace or anything you want like that. So that's really a nice idea as well. Now we sprayed our little guy again and we're going to do the quick aluminum real quick. We're basically going to do it the same way. The quick and the aluminum and the quick Copper work very similar to each other. They dry the same amount of time, which is very, very fast. 
Now this guy I didn't take out quite as much. The quick copper seems to be a little bit more, chalky is not the right word, but a little bit more grainy. And he seems to do better if you add just a little bit of water or a little bit more vegetable spray to him. I'm not using as much on this guy because I'm not doing as big as ornament as I did last time. And you, because it dries so fast, you want to make sure that you only use the amount that you need, that you don't have any extra. You can't wait and work it into your next piece like you do with a quick wood. Okay, so we have this all nice and rolled out. And I'm going to take the stamp this time and I'm going to do a green. And we're going to put him in there. And pull him straight out. And then we have our little S. And then I'm going to do our initials in it. Try and fit him in here. Try him in red. And it's a little bit tougher. harder because there's not quite as much room but we've got both of our initials with our last name which is really cool and before I let that dry well we'll do that in the last second here because I don't have a cookie cutter to this shape I'm just going to take my exacto knife and you can put vegetable spray on it to help it go through the clay and I am going to trim this guy Trim him out just around our shape. I use a little bit more vegetable spray so it'll come out a little bit smoother. And just remove all of that from him. Now, this guy is still a little bit wet where the clay is. So I'm going to take it, and like we talked about, I'm going to roll up my ball and and push it right down, make a little circle. And like I said, if you have a little circle, and also, I just realized your caps would work on your quick wood. Make your little circle out. I'm not going to worry about the rest of that little stuff. We'll get that in a minute. And my husband wanted me to reiterate that you should not be wearing jewelry than this because it will get caught in your jewelry. You saw, so if you can't get your ring off, tape your ring. Okay, and I am going to try to do something a little bit different here. This may or may not work out. I'm going to put the S up at the top. And I'm going to try and put the V down to one side. And the M down to one side. And Think of them as Christmas uh, tags too. You could do Christmas tags with these as well. They don't have to be just ornaments. Now on this one, I almost put it in the wrong end. I'm going to also, if your if your edges are a little bit rough, kind of smooth it with your finger a little bit, and it gets a little bit drier. You can pick it up and still smooth it a little bit. And you can also put a little bit of a bossing powder around the edges like I did on this one with the green but I like just that look right there I don't want to overdo it so I'm going to take my arm I'm going to poke a hole in it and I don't want to poke it up there because it's thinner and I don't want it to break through so I'm going to put the hole in it you do need that probably a little bit bigger if you're going to put the cording through it now this little guy his S is just a little bit off-centered 
And I'm going to come back in and make these a little bit bigger so I can use them later. And if you don't quite get all that stuff through, it usually will break through if you push it later. This one would be really nice to come in with a different color and just catch the edges with a little bit of embossing powder. And I just used what little I had in my brush. Gave it a little bit of a gold dusting, maybe just a tad, tad more. But there's a lot of things you can do with this. A lot of things you can use it for. So just don't get caught. My idea is like I always tell you, use your imagination and just improve on it. Now I'm going to show you real quick how I do the cording. Now these guys are drying. So we're going to set those aside. And I'm going to use um, a different one. But I also want to show you, this was a Christmas tree. There's all kinds of dollar stamps that you can pick up in the dollar section at Michael's so you're not limited to just all of those things. So, you know, really take advantage of it. Look and see what's there and think about all the fun things you can do and change your colors with your stamp pads and make it real easy on yourself but real fun. Now, the cording, you want it to bring out the color of your ornament and I'm just going to use a little one here and we're going to cut it and you can use ribbon, you can use string, whatever you want to use. I cut it right about there. Now you don't want to just slide it through one way and leave it like that because if you do it's going to hang sideways and we don't want it to hang sideways. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop it through and my hole's not as big in the back as it is in the front. So we have two ways we can do this. So if I can't get them through at one time we'll do something different here. Okay, they're coming through. Have much of a nails, so um, if you watch my videos, you know I'm really hard on my nails, and my nails aren't strong anyway. So I always joke about having the most colorful nails in the business. They're usually full of glitter and everything else. Okay, I think. I've going to teach you the second one. If you can do that, just pull it through and pull this to a loop and then take it up and tie it. That way it hold, goes forward. If you cannot get both of them through and you can only get one through, take it, tie a knot at the bottom right above the ornament and pull that down as close to the ornament as you can get it. Pull it nice and tight and then just tie it again at the top and then it will hang straight. And you always want to make sure that you leave enough room for all the knots. I think this one could have been a little bit longer because I wasn't planning on knotting him as much but that's okay. Just pull him as close as you can to the top and we'll knot him off. And then I usually take a little piece of ribbon depending on the color of my ornament. And we're just going to tie him. And I'm just going to hot glue this guy together instead of, since he's so small, instead of putting wire around him to make a bow. So we're just going to do one, two, and I'm going to take that all the way across, and I'm going to squish him a little bit. We're going to glue him right on that knot, and I always use the glue. 
the low setting on the glue gun. I used to be one of these people that figured if low was better, high had to be twice as good. And I do not know why I had to do that, but I have made my burn so many times it's not even funny. And I usually put a little bit of an ornament here, but he has stuck to me and has wandered off somewhere. So put a little bit of a sparkle there, whether it's a little snowflake or a rhinestone or something like that. On these guys, I just kind of went through my um, house and kind of looked in my supplies what I had extra. I found a little butterfly, and I love butterflies. The rhinestone. This was just paper raffia that I put on. But if you have any questions about what we did today, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com for um, any of the Quickwood products we may have used today. You can buy those off my website at miriamjoy.com. There's also a YouTube link that takes you over to more of these fun YouTube videos to help you learn something new every day. And don't get stuck in just Christmas right now. Take these ideas and think about what you can do with them during the whole year. There's also a Facebook link, and you don't have to be a member of Facebook. We have some fun contests that are going on. And just jump on over there and join the fun. And I try to post a picture of a new board every day to inspire you. You can also find me on Pinterest and Twitter. Thank you and God bless.